Bob, was giving away your book, Living the Cross-Centered Life. Anyone familiar with your ministries, familiar with your passion for the cross, your preaching on the cross, uh, your emphasis on living in light of the cross, in light of the gospel? Um, many of the songs that we sing here and that are produced by people in Sovereign Grace, mm-hmm. written by people in Sovereign Grace, are have the gospel as a key component to it. Mm-hmm. I hope so. I know so. There are all kinds of themes in mm. Scripture. Mm. There are all kinds of songs. Um, why should we have so many songs on the cross? Um, why must we? Re- why should that living the cross-centered life good? Why should that play such a central role in our mm. singing when there are so many other things we could sing about? Mm. Excellent question. Well, the gospel. Christ and him crucified is is the storyline of the Bible. Therefore, this should be the storyline of our singing, the storyline of our corporate worship. Uh, This is is the matter of first importance. So that should be reflected in our lyrics. It should be reflected in our singing on a weekly basis. And and we uh, we must never leave the impression in worship that we do not need a mediator. Um, There isn't a moment where I don't need a mediator. We must never leave the impression that we can approach God the Father directly. Um, In light of His holiness and my sinfulness, I cannot approach Him apart from a mediator. And so it, it, it is quite possible for us to, uh, to sing songs that are accurately extolling the attributes of God. But if there's an absence of the cross, the unintended consequence is leaving the impression that somehow I can approach apart from a mediator that somehow I can experience intimacy with God apart from the one who who died for my many sins. And and then I would add, you know, even a casual reading of the book of Revelation would inform us of what is taking place at this moment and inform us about our heavenly future. And I think it's Jim Eliff who has written, um, he, he wrote the following. It's a, he said, one is taken aback by the emphasis on the cross in the book of Revelation. Um, heaven, if my memory serves me, never gets over the cross or thinks there are other or better things than the cross. Heaven is not only Christ-centered, but cross-centered. And I think the final phrase is, I love this phrase, and quite blaring about it. So, every Sunday should be a heavenly preview as we survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, and as we sing to the Lamb who is worthy, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So those would be some of the things I would say um, about why our worship must be cross-centered. And and we should be humbled by this, as well as amazed um, that this great God has had mercy on us by planning and providing a mediator. And lo and behold, that mediator is his son. And he sends him and he crushes him with the wrath that I deserve for my many sins, just the sins I committed this day. So, may we sing with hearts filled with amazement every Sunday to the one who died in our place, 
satisfying God's wrath and securing our justification and the forgiveness of all our sins. And, and what a privilege it is to sing. What a gift. Singing is it's just, it's just this unique gift, is it not? Um, Lloyd-Jones said that, um, have you ever realized that most of your unhappiness in your life is due to the fact that you're listening to yourself rather than talking to yourself? That's just a profound quote. Have you ever realized? Why don't you repeat that? What's that? You have, you ever realized, that? have you ever realized that most of your unhappiness um, is due to the fact that you listen to yourself more than you talk to yourself. So it, it really is in the book, Spiritual Depression, it's causes and cures. And uh, I, I can still, I, can, I think I can still vividly remember the moment I read that, and that would be in excess of 20 years ago, and, and read that particular statement, that particular quote. Have, have you ever realized? So, uh, you know, I, I, I pray that everyone freshly realizes that most, not all, but most, oh, this is just sweet discernment that'll set you free and make a difference on a daily basis, that most of your unhappiness, so when you're unhappy, you can assume this about your unhappy state and your unhappy soul. Most of your unhappiness is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself rather than talking to yourself. So you can transition from an unhappy soul to a happy soul, from a troubled soul to a hopeful soul, by talking truth to yourself, by preaching the gospel to yourself. Now, if you're a worship leader, here's the pure joy. Singing is a means of talking to yourself. Singing is a means of biblical self-counseling. So you have the privilege to lead people in a cessation of listening to themselves and a celebration of talking to themselves and preaching the gospel to themselves so that at the end of the service, they leave edified rather than unhappy. Um, and we, we do, we experience this every Sunday. Do, do, do we not most every Sunday, if you are unhappy at the outset of the meeting, you are happy at the end of the meeting. Why? Well, it's because we have been singing the gospel. <laughs> and one can't sing the gospel and cease listening without being freshly affected by the gospel. So what, what a unique gift singing is and what a unique role and privilege you have to lead the church in this. We are now together gonna cease listening to ourselves. We're gonna cease listening to sin. We're going to cease listening to condemnation. We're going to cease listening to legalism. We're going to cease listening and instead we're going to sing and we're going to sing the gospel and we're going to sing gospel-centered doctrine to ourselves and to God. And as we sing to the Savior, we are going to be transformed in our souls. And that is what you as a worship leader have the privilege to do each and every Sunday. What a privilege. What a joy. <laughs>